Nah, I feel great, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my friends have been here. This is the first time I'm here, you know, this time around. Um, but no, it feels really good, you know? People are, are, are with open arms, you know? There's been a few times over the last 10 or 15 years that I was supposed to come to South America, but things have always fallen through and, and not, and the gigs haven't followed, you know, gone through and stuff. But I'm here now and, and it was great. It was great, really good. Well, basically, I started in hip hop, you know, um, in the early 80s. When I first started DJing and stuff, I was DJing hip hop and reggae. House came in from Chicago. So when that music came in, I was just like, wow, you know, it's really not too, not too much to it. You know what I mean? So I started to, to mess with it. And then little by little, I just started making beats. And then, you know, one thing led to another. Um, I worked at a record store. My boss there, he had a friend who was starting a record label, which was New Groove Records. So they gave me my first imprint, which was Dope Wax, which I still have to today, to put out music. That's when Louis Vega heard one of my songs and me being tight with Todd Terry, Todd was already working with Louis and he just linked the two and you know, pretty much we met in 90 and the rest is pretty much history. In Brooklyn, you had, where I lived, you had a lot of different types of people. So for instance, my neighborhood was Puerto Rican, right? The next neighborhood was Italian. The neighborhood over here was African American and Jamaican. And then the neighborhood up was Jewish. So all those different kind of people, the cultures, all the music they listened to was in the, I was in the middle. So I heard it all. So not knowing it was inside, plus, like I said, I have the rhythm already because my dad being Puerto Rican and, you know, listening to Latin as well. Um, I just played it all. I just, you know, as a DJ, a lot of the older DJs that were playing played everything. So it was natural, you know. Um, a lot of the DJs in the, in the 70s and 80s in New York played everything. They, was, they wasn't in one style. So I guess when that being inside me, so when I started to produce more and more and more, I started to incorporate those sounds and that, those vibes into the music. The technology to me is amazing. Um, Let's be frank, like, I'll be able, in my laptop, I'm able to carry maybe a $500,000 studio in my laptop, right? With plugins and everything. Whereas years ago, you couldn't do it. But then it also brings to the table a lot of people that think they, they're DJs and they're not. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's very simple to DJ today. Like I said, anybody could have 200 mp3s grab a computer or grab usb sticks and play you know where things are synced but necessarily that doesn't put you in a space where you're in a club and you're able to read the crowd and see what they like and what they don't like you know why because you're used to playing these tracks in a row so i think though that's the negative of of the scene where everybody just thinks that they can do it i'm not mad at it it's just a different form of DJ, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, you know, the parties in the 80s and the 90s where everybody was together. You could go to a New York City club and you would hear five to six different styles of music in one night. And everybody would just go with the flow. It was normal, you know what I mean? Because, you, you, you know, you, that's, how we, that's how DJs play, you know? I think around the late 90s, early 2000s, that's when everything started getting separate. You know, um, people started treating people different. If you were into this music, oh no, no, no we, don't, we, don't, we don't mess with that. You know, it's not, it's not cool. Yeah. You know, everything's not cool, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And people forget that, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you're there to experience something. My biggest issue is phones today, where it's like, you know, you go to the club, to have a good time, not to be on your phone filming everything because you're missing the experience. You know what I mean? It's just like you have it, but you're also missing the excitement of what's going on around you, you know? So as hip hop progressed and came out, 
they were using samples in the music. So I was very interested to see what those records were that they were using. So I started to collect. And what happens when you start to collect, you start learning about certain musicians, you learn about certain labels that have a sound. So if you like the sound, you, you start wanting to know what all this music is. So me being from Brooklyn, me absorbing all this music, it got me into jazz, it got me into, you know, jazz from Germany, jazz from France, and uh, music from England, library music from England, you know? So I started to collect all this music. You gotta look at it, these records is my library. Like when you go to a library to read books or to educate yourself on history, you know what I'm saying? It's the same thing for me. So um, that's basically my library. I fell into it, man. I, as you know, it's like, uh, it's one of those things where I love music. Um, a lot of my friends when I was younger were getting into trouble, either selling drugs or sticking people up or, you know, things like that. And I didn't want to live that life. I knew that I wanted to do something in music um, and I just stuck to it. And little by little, things started falling into place. You know what I mean? Um, and that was it, you know, records that I made were traveling to these countries that I never even knew existed. Mm -hmm. And they were called for me to go DJ at these, these countries. Yeah. And one thing led to the next. And, and you know, I always stuck to what I felt in my heart. Um, but that's, that's, that's pretty much it, you know?